Now it's time for some classic Power Rangers racism. Welcome to Ranger Reviews, a web series where we look at episodes of the TV show Power Rangers and then discuss them. Today we're exploring the 140th episode of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, as well as the 28th episode of Season 3, titled A Chimp in Charge. We begin this episode at Angel Grove High, where Miss Appleby is giving everyone the last assignment of the year. Everyone and their partners are going to give presentations on any language that they choose. Bulk then asks if they can choose English, and Miss Appleby says that she's going to accept that. And Bulk says that he's going to get an A for just for talking, and Miss Appleby lets them know that they can't just ramble for 10 minutes. Class dismissed. At the Youth Center, Aisha asks Billy and Tommy what they're going to do their project on, and Billy explains that they're going to look at hieroglyphics and how they translate in modern society. And Aisha says, those pictures and pyramids that tell stories? Girl, it's a lot deeper than that, but all right. Tommy asks what she's doing with Kat, and then Kat just walks in with a chimpanzee named Kelly, and she explains that her aunt is here visiting from Australia, and she's a guest lecturer at the university, and she's working on teaching chimps sign language. Also, um, Kat, you can't just bring an animal into a food establishment. Oh my gosh, she should know this better than anyone else. She was the animal last time. They're going to teach Kelly some things, and Kat says that even if they can't, it's going to be fun anyways. I mean, girl, then you're going to fail. Rita's watching this, and after she compares the monkey to Goldar and laughs, Zed comes up screaming about how they can use this to their advantage. They're going to turn the chimp against the rangers with some minor alterations, evidently. Stone is at the juice bar, and Bulk and Skull lean into the scene, and he explains that there's been a theft at the cafe, and they need to investigate it. Apparently, bananas have been stolen, and Ernie explains how they need to find them for his special smoothies. Bulk and Skull find the ranger teens outside, and Bulk compares Tommy to the monkey. Then Cat gives the chimp a banana because it points at Aisha's ice cream. So Bulk suspects that the thief is the obvious monkey, and he asks who they know who likes bananas. And Skull suggests his cousin Fumer, who lives in New Jersey. The hell? Zed sees the ranger teens walking through the park with Kelly, and he tells Spencer they need something to turn that monkey into a monster. The Tangas appear in front of them, and Kat tells the chimp to go hide, and Kelly just does it? What kind of unrealistic occurrence is this? Whatever. Ninja Ranger power now! The Rangers fight off the Tangas, and then Fencer shows up, firing a laser at Kelly, who runs away. But luckily, Kat stops him before he disappears. This caused the Tangas to freak out for no reason, and the teens say that they have to get Kelly to a safe space, because apparently, that and Rita really want it. At Aisha's house, Bulk and Skull are standing in a bush with a banana. <laughs> okay. Inside, Aisha and Kat are starting sign language for themselves, and they say that they're hungry. And they ask the chimp if she wants to join. And the chimp kind of shakes her head, so I guess not. And then Kat just kisses the monkey on the lips like a goddamn pervert. Then they just leave the chimp alone by itself? I don't even know if that's a thing that you can do. Kelly gets bored, I guess, getting up and then she just opens the door of the house somehow, leaving. Aisha should never be allowed to have pets because this is twice now that animals in her care have just walked out the freaking front door. Bulk and Skull run after the monkey with a banana as bait and they lure Kelly in, picking up this adorable chimp. Then Cat comes into the room with bananas and Aisha comes in too with food for them and they start panicking that Kelly is gone. I mean, maybe you shouldn't have left the chimpanzee alone then? Bulk and Skull are in the park trying to get Kelly to show them where the bananas are, and they let her run away. She runs to a Rastafarian man at a fruit stand, and he says that if Kelly wants to work with him, I don't know that she does, she has to wear the right clothes. Then he literally puts a mop and clothes on the chimp to make it a Rastafarian monkey? The hell is happening? Bulk and Skull also agree that this means that this guy is the one who stole the fruit. Zed is pissed that Finster failed, so he turns Kelly into the Sinister Simeon. Well, she's a Sinister Simeon, according to Zed. Then she runs away, attacking people in the playground. Kat and Aisha get beat by Zoran, asking them to come to the command center right away. All six are there, watching the viewing globe, seeing that Kelly was turned into a monster. Also, I'm pretty sure this is the first time this episode that we've seen Rocky and Adam. I don't know where the hell they've been. Billy suggests that if he gets a fur sample, they can turn her back by reverse engineering how they turned her into a monster. Also, Billy talks for like three hours about what he's going to do by getting the fur from her with metal tongs used to get hot dogs out of a boiling water. Kelly freaks out, hitting him, so the other rangers try to stop her from moving, and Billy gets the fur after Aisha tells Kat to tell Billy to get the fur now, even though they're the exact same distance away from each other. Billy teleports out to get to his lab to test the fur. Zed and Rita laugh at how much the rangers suck. 
in Billy's lab, Billy talks to Zora about how he's close to finding a solution, but he needs to figure out how to administer the antidote. The Rangers are also losing to Kelly, and now she doesn't even recognize their voices. So Zed says, make my monkey grow, <laughs> forcing her giant before Tommy tells a random extra to not be afraid and to go straight home. I mean, thanks, Tommy. Don't know what we'd do without you. Billy shows up with the antidote and a projectile that he says they have to fire at Kelly from the Shogun Zords, and Aisha asks if it worked at the lab, and of course, Billy hasn't tested it because when has he ever tested anything ever? They call it the Shogun Zords. Then Billy says he has to hit her in the exact right spot near the heart where memories are kept. Billy, I don't know about the science logic that you have going on right now. Then Kelly is just straight up beating the others super easily. Then Kat tells Tommy they need to distract Kelly, and the white Shogun Zord waves at her? This causes her to run around, I guess. Then Billy fires the antidote via a finger laser, hitting Kelly, causing her to return to her original form. The ranger teens run over, scooping her up. Zed and Rita are screaming at each other on the moon about how Rita failed once again, because that's how this whole thing is now. At the youth center, everyone is hanging out with the monkey, and they talk about how great their report was off screen. Cool. Hulk and Skull come in with the Rastafarian man saying that he's the banana thief, and Ernie says that they were just put away in the freezer by a mistake by a new stock boy. Who the hell puts bananas in the freezer? The Rastafarian then says they'll be hearing from his attorney. Then Kelly runs over, hugging Bulk, and Kat says that Bulk at least has one friend. I mean, Jesus, Kat, you've been here for like a day. Over the credits, we see a bunch of monkey bloopers. This episode was weird because there's never any real Japanese footage. I mean, seriously, it's almost all recycled. We never see the Sinister Simeon in any Japanese footage, and even the entire Zord battle is American footage. Why? Well, in Japan, they use a different set of Zords to handle the monster. Why didn't they just use another monster instead of doing yet another damn cat episode? Who knows? Other than that, this episode's fine, besides the abhorrent racism. It could have been better, but again, season three has shown us that the writers are down to do original storylines and film more things to get a better idea across than just be a slave to the Japanese footage. It really makes you wonder what season one would have been like had they put this much effort into the show, but I understand that a big financial risk was apparent for them. It really makes you wonder what season one would have been like had they put this much effort into the show, but I understand that this was a big financial risk for them to begin with. Next time we begin a three-parter that's insanely weird. But until then, may the power protect you.